Now the next step is how to connect to various data sources. So there are three steps. You have to connect to data sources, uh, which involves locating the data and using an appropriate type of connection to read the data. Then it will choose the dimension and the measures. This will involve selecting the required columns from the source data for analysis. And then finally, you want to apply your visualization techniques, which will involve applying required visualization methods such as specific charts or graphs type. Now, how do we connect to data? I told you how to connect to data. As soon as you connect to data, if you open any of the sheets, you will see automatically it will define the uh, by looking at the columns, it will define the columns into two parts. <clears throat> One is the dimension, another is a measure. Now, dimensions are something which have a string in them that are defined in the section of dimensions, like your orders, customer ID, customer name, category, everything. And the columns, which are numeric, will be defined in the measure section. So it will automatically divide them into two sections itself. So that was choosing dimension and measures. Now applying visual techniques. So you can simply now make anything out of the visuals. You can like put any of the column. And from here, you can select any sales numbers or if you want to create a chart over here or to create anything over here, you can simply go ahead and click on that and create them. So it's good to go. Okay, so this is how we connect to a data source. And that's what is explained on the chart as well. So for example, if not this one, Let's say I'll show you one more where you just take the maybe the state and based on the state, I'll take my profit. Or not state also, let's take some small section, maybe a subcategory. So if I create like a chart, I'll be able to see it in some like this way. Or if you want to create a bubble chart, it will be side of like this. Any chart, any chart of your choice. This is something it looks like. Pretty easy. So that's what is explained that you can choose your dimension and measures. Next, you choose the data to be analyzed by deciding on the dimensions and the measures. So dimensions are descriptive data while measures are your numeric data. As I told you, then when you put together, they help visualizing and performing the dimensions data with respect to the data, which are measures. So once you do that, you choose a category and let's say I'll in that case, I'll choose, I have to do subcategory and sales, but you can also choose category and region and sales as well. So based on that, you will get your data set. You drag and drop the following as mentioned in the screenshots and you get your results. So they have created a table view. You can create any of the visuals, like you can apply your visualization technique. Now, there is one thing which is there that in the previous step, you saw that the data is available only in numbers. So that number is nothing but a view of a table. Just simple table you've been shown. So that I can also show you over here. So if I simply go and check on this table, so this is something which is a visual of the table that based on my, and uh, in fact, I can put on some more data. That based on the based on the categories and based on the states, I have the data available. So this is something which is called as your numbers table. So accordingly, you can you can uh, really have any visuals applicable to here. 
if you want, you can have like a map over here. Or if not, you want to create a table or maybe a type of a box and whiskers chart or any sort of a chart you want to create, you can just simply create that. Completely your choice. Okay. So that's how, and these are the steps basically written over here. So that's how you can visualize your data. Now, let's suppose if you want to add some color, maybe some colors in your data or something of that sort, let's take a small data set so that uh, it's maybe easily understandable. Let's take something else. And um, let's take this chart only. And maybe take the category. And probably the region. So probably that and uh, here I can basically put this region on the colors rather than keeping it here. So now you can see based on each region, my data sets is divided. So these are something called as the marks where you can have color, you can increase, decrease the size. You can have labels if you want to show the labels of the data, if you want to show any detail, like this way. These are tool tips there you can enter. So whatever I hover over here, and I see that it's a category furniture, region is East, and the profit number is 3046. So if you want to add anything on the tool tip, if you want to remove anything from the tool tip, so you can do that. If you don't want to show the tool tip, just uncheck this box, click on OK. And once you hover it, you won't have a tool set to show for. Completely your choice. That's how you want to keep it. So these are some of the details and a basic formatting of the chart that we do in our tablet. Now, this is something which is called as legends. You can move it over here if you want. Legends comes in when you put something on the colors. If you have a different colors, like for example, here in I have divided the category in the based on any region. So my region would lead to a legend over here. Based on different colors, my categories have been divided. So that's why it shows up as a region as my legend over here. So these are the legends. If you want, you can show them. Or if you want, you can hide them. In fact, if you have an option to change the colors as well. So you can just simply go over here. Click on edit colors and you can just simply edit the legends from here. Like let's say I will choose something of like this and I will assign the palette and I will apply and I'll say okay. So this is something which you can do. You can format your legends as well. You can change the font, you can change the alignment. You can change the body of that. If you want any shading, if you want any border, you can do that. Similarly, if you want to show the title, you can show that. If you want to ed not show the title, you can uncheck that. If you want to edit the title and rename it to something else, you can do that. Or maybe just bring it to the center, you can do that as well. Highlight selected segments. So see, it gets highlighted like this way. If you want to keep it included, if you want to sort it, maybe in a descending order, you can do that. Then we have an option to hide it. You can hide that also. And you will trace. So 
these are some options on the sheet when we create a chart. Apart from that, there is an option of page if you want. So this is basically a page name if you want to add for. By default, it shows up. If you want to hide that, you can hide it. Then we have an option of filter, wherein let's say if I want to put a filter on the on my region column, I want to put a filter over here for the region column and I apply and click on it. And based on that filter, if I want to change this data, for example, I have a full option to edit the filters, wherein I can select from a list of filters. I can custom my value list of filters. Custom means if I want to have a custom list of filters, I can do that. If I want to use all, I can use it. So that's a general setting that I have. Apart from that, if I want to have any wildcard entries, for example, if something starts with A or something ends with A, B, something of that sort, or maybe an exact match, or maybe I want to uh, have some conditions where it's only the values that contains maybe the region, that, uh, maybe the data coming from West, I want to include them. So I'll use that case. Then conditions. Condition means if I want to have a profit sum, which is equal to, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, by that way, if I want to apply for, I can do that. I can have a minimum and maximum value of range. If I want to add a formula over here, I want to click that, I can do it. Then next come is the top five and bottom five. I'm just giving you a gist, but we'll do what is top five and bottom five. Generally, what is top five, let's say from whole list of categories, I just want to show what are the top performing categories that I have in a particular region. So in that case, I can use a top five or a top five for that case. I can just click on the field and I can apply for a top or a bottom five performing conditions based on the profit column or region column or whatever. Or if I want to apply a formula based on a top and bottom performing, I can do that. So that is about the filters. And next is if you want to show the filters, you can simply show it over here. Then show highlighter. You can highlight a region. Uh, let's say highlighted this region. Or maybe I highlighted this region. So it will show only the highlighted region over here. Then clear filter. If you want to clear the filter, you can do it. Add to context. I'll tell you this later when we'll do the different types of filters all together. Apply to worksheet. So from here, you can choose which worksheets to apply for. Do you want to apply to all the worksheets that is there or only you want to apply to which is using it, the related data source, which use the column region. You want to apply to that or you want to use it to all the data sources or the selected worksheets like according to your preference or according to your selections you want to use for you can do that you can sort it you can clear the sort you can create sets you can uh, like have it's a measure so you can have a count this thing maximum minimum or if you want to remove the filter you can remove that as well so this is about the filters option over here in the page. Coming back to PPT. So like the way I created the charts, similar way you can see it in a snippet. Now coming on to the design flow. Now design flow is something that how actually the system design of Tableau works. How the data flows, how the system design of Tableau basically works. So how it works is, you first connect to a data source, you build a data view, you enhance the data view. So first you connect to a data source. After you connect to a data source, you build your data views. Data views in the sense you enhance the data set, you connect with the data set, you do all of them. Then you enhance your data views. Enhance your data views means you enhance the data, like the way you want to connect with the data and you want to do everything, you enhance your data. Then you create the worksheets. 
So this is something which is called as the worksheet and you create the worksheet over here. Then next is you create and organize your dashboard. So once my sheets are created over here, I organize them in a simple dashboard like this thing. And then finally you create a story. So an interactive story, which is a form of a presentation in the form of a PPT. You can just simply create those stories over here so that it's much more interactive to view. We will be covering all of these topics, so don't worry about that. But right now, I'm just giving you an overview of everything. So this is how basically your uh, Tableau data flow works on. And this is how it exactly works in a way. Okay. Now moving on to the next. There are some terms in meaning which you always know whenever you start working and whenever you complete with the basics of it. So they are first is an alias. Alias is nothing but an alternative name that you assign to a feed. So whenever you insert a data or whenever you uh, select a data into the tab, whatever the name of the columns that is there in your Excel file or maybe any source of data source is there, that will be the name that will be shown up in your Tableau as well. But let's suppose if you want to give that demo, give it a different name to any of the columns. Let's say I want to rename this product name to just name. So I can just change the alias of anything. Alias means I can change any name of it. Any of the product name, I can change the name of it. So that is called a changing of alias. Bin, it's basically a user-defined grouping measure in a data source. So we have an option to create bin over here. We'll obviously going to do that. But if you create on any column and you go to create, have the option to create group and this group is nothing but the group is called as a bill. Then bookmarks. Bookmarks is there in Tableau repository. Like they are the .tbm file that contains a single worksheet. Like for example, like uh, you bookmark a work page or a workbook. The same way we bookmark it and it's a convenient way to quickly display different analysis. Calculated fields. Calculated fields are basically the new field that you create by using a formula or you modify the existing field in your data source. So calculated field option, you basically get from this anchor. You can have the option to create calculated field. Then there's an option of a cross tab. Cross tab is nothing. For example, if there is a chart which is created in a form of a presentation, and you want to see it, that same re pre visual presented in a form of a table, then you want to see it in a form of a text and number, then you basically go ahead and use a cross tab in that case. So cross tab helps you to view that data in that way. So that is called as a cross tab view. Okay. That's called a now dashboard. Dashboard is a combination of several view arranged on a single page. So this is what you see as a dashboard. Now here, each and every is a cell, is a page, is a combination of a page that you see over here. That's one page. This is one of a page. So this is called as a dashboard, which is a combination of different pages altogether. Data pane. Data pane, I told you, data pane is nothing, but data pane is something over here. This is your data pane. Data source page. Data source page is this page. This is called as a data source page. Okay. 
dimensions a field of categorical data basically so a categorical data field that is there categorical field means dimensions which hold discrete data or in hierarchy members that cannot be aggregated for example dates customer names customer segments all of these okay So these are called as your basic.